It makes the medicine go down, as Mary Poppins told us, but it can also increase your need for medicines. That's because sugar can lead to obesity that in turn leads to a whole host of other problems, ranging from diabetes and heart disease to cancer. Do we really need any more bad news about sugar to encourage cutting back on intake? No, but here it comes anyway. Chinese researchers have just published a paper that links dietary sugar intake with depression. How did scientists reach this conclusion? They mined data from the U.S. National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey that was carried out between 2011 and 2018, in which some 18,000 participants were interviewed by phone and asked to recall exactly what foods and how much of those foods they had consumed in the past 24 hours. Such surveys are notoriously unreliable. Just try it for yourself. See if you can list in terms of grams exactly what you ate yesterday. Not so easy, right? It's also curious to note that the study was by Chinese scientists who used open access American data. This is sort of an easy way to get a publication by using someone else's research, a practice that seems to be common in China. The scientific consensus is that total sugar intake should not exceed about 90 grams a day, with 30 grams of that being free sugar, meaning sugars added to food or drinks, and sugars found naturally in honey, syrups, and unsweetened fruit and vegetable juices, smoothies, and purees. For children, ideally free sugar should be less than 25 grams a day. Sugar in fruit, vegetables, milk, or grains are not counted as free sugar, but are part of the 90 grams of total sugar. For processed foods, generally more than 22 grams per 100 grams of food is considered to be high in sugar, less than 5 grams indicates a low sugar food. When the researchers compared people who consumed more than 90 grams of total sugars with those who consumed less than 90 grams, they found a higher incidence of depression in the high sugar group. Presence of depression was evaluated based on questionnaires that asked about appetite problems, fatigue, sleep difficulty, slower thinking, slower body movements, lack of interest, low mood, feeling of worthlessness, and suicidal thoughts. A study such as this has many pitfalls, with possibility of reverse causation being a prime one. Perhaps depression drives people to eat more sugar. Also, one cannot assume that a diet described in one particular interview is representative of the diet consumed every day, and the validity of diagnosing depression via a questionnaire has been questioned. But even if this Chinese study linking sugar to depression can be skewered for its various limitations, there's no question that we should be cutting back on added sugars. Everyone knows that pastries and candy bars are loaded with sugar, Slice of apple pie can have 25 grams, roughly the same as in a Hershey chocolate bar. But uh, two teaspoons of sugar in your coffee, well, that will add another eight grams. The sugar content of soft drinks, however, often comes as a surprise to consumers. One 12 ounce can of soda can contain about 40 grams of added sugar, putting you over the daily limit. Cutting out soft drinks is a simple way to reduce sugar intake, maybe even the risk of depression. Unfortunately, for many people, giving up sodas is a depressing thought. That for today is our cup of joe. No sugar added.